wanted to be an artist when I was a teenager. And so I went to University of Alabama, not knowing where I wanted to go. I quit school at Alabama after two years. I gave up a scholarship and uh, moved to New York City when I was 20. I saw myself as an artist. It, it wasn't like um, I took steps to become a professional. I didn't, I'm from a very old fashioned um, Southern Catholic family and to think in professional terms, I was a wildly impractical young woman. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. After spending a couple of years in that, the studio back then, I wound up um, going back to school and thinking I was just leaving painting because I just couldn't do it. It was like I was always desperate. And um, so I went to Hunter first and then I wound up with a master's in urban planning from Columbia and I got out in 2010 and there were no jobs. And so I took my young son back south. I went to the Florida Panhandle, which is a little bit east of where I'm from in Mobile, Alabama. Um, I did a piece on um, Fort Walton Beach, I realized in the Florida town that I'd been, I'd made all these kind of lush paintings about the South, kind of lush, beautiful, but, and there were some subversive elements. If you looked hard, you'd find some critical subversive elements in them, but I realized when I talked about the town, I'd be like, that place, there's, it's just full of, you know, strip joints and churches. What a horrible place, and I used worse language than that, but I, I knew I had to make a grid of strip joints and churches, because that's what it was, that a woman had to find a way to live within this grid of, of strip joints and churches. Um, well, some of them have surprised me, like um, I'm working on an ancestry project right now, um, tracing women in my family. We, my brother traced us back uh, thousands of years in some cases, so I've been making dresses for each of these women. And so I think about the women and what they held in their bodies, the trauma they held in their bodies, the bodies they held in their bodies, and how circumscribed women's lives have always been. And in some ways it moves me away from thinking about what my mother did or did not do for me and into thinking about what she carried in her body and intergenerational trauma and how full of that women's lives have been. In some ways, I'm being pushed to undo what I think I know. I think of the way we carry our, our ways of life in our bodies. I think of the way capitalism has us all performing this certain kinds of tasks, mostly repetitively, like if you're in a factory. And I worked as a letterpress printer for a year in my early 20s, so I was rolling a press like this, forward and backward, um, for like 80 hours a week. And that was one of the reasons I went to dance. I needed to repair that. And dance was always a way for me to find freedom in my body and to maintain freedom in my life. And there's something about dance and movement that can um, undo the strictures. Certainly, it's not been particularly easy, um, but in, it seems like over and over again, what happens is when I turn back towards art, my life opens up because I, I had this idea that, oh, art is hard and, you know, I didn't get my MFA from Yale by the time I was 25, so it, there's only, but it's not been the way that it operates in my life. It just seems that my life is fuller and richer and um, like there are, when doors open, they open fully.